Right, there she is. And don't worry, you haven't missed an episode. Basically, I've just done a bit of a knock-up there. It looks pretty much complete, but it's not. I've simply bolted bits on just to um, basically see if they fit and highlight any issues. Um, and I've found a couple. As you can probably see... Um, the centre stand is useless as it is. What I'll probably end up doing is taking it off and welding on some bits of... Uh, tube steel or something like that on the bottom just to uh to make it functional or in any case i'll keep it on because even like that it's still usable i'll just put a, a, a plank of wood underneath it or something on the rare occasions i need to use it um to work on the back wheel or whatever chain fitted engine casing fitted um that's all okay i did have to um chop a bit of chain off uh because it was um, a bit too long um, wheels and tyres all look good what I've got here is I'm using these CG ears as you can see there's a bit of a gap there but that's not a problem because I've got uh, some hose that I can chop down and put there to fill it in I have also got uh, proper light ears for a CT, which I might end up using, but I've got the option. I've got a CG, sorry, a C90 centre, uh, sorry, wheel pin for the front wheel, which doesn't fit. So I've ordered uh, a CG uh, pin. I'm waiting for a lot of stuff to arrive. There you can see. A pretty cheapo pit bike exhaust. What I'd like to do is fit a proper exhaust, like my CT's got over there. But that exhaust with the furniture um, is about 250 quid's worth. And uh, the flange on the engine is different, so you have to chop off the end and weld on a pit bike flange, which isn't such a big deal. Uh, and I will like to do that, because it looks proper. Um, that one doesn't really look great. It doesn't fit great. It, um, it's, it's in front of the side panel there, which obviously the side panel isn't fitted. But as you can see, it should clear the side panel for easy access to the battery, etc. So, yeah, for, just for the time being, just for knocking up, I'll, um, I'll keep to this pit bike exhaust. I'll just have to build a little bracket to hold it onto this, the end of that. But, um, yeah, it's all going okay. Uh, I have bought new switch gear, which I, did, I just slightly prefer for this, this option. But it hasn't arrived, so I'm going to wire it up with this gear. If I need to put the other stuff on, it's an easy job then. Um, yeah, so it's pretty much all fits. It's just a case of mucking about. There's a few big-ish jobs to do. Fit the seat is going to be a bit of a head-scratcher. Um, and I'm going to have to decide on what I do with this bit here. But uh, we'll see how that goes. Um, one other thing, because it's a semi-automatic engine, as you can see with the switch gear here, I've got um, what would be a clutch pedal, sorry, a clutch lever on that side, which is surplus to requirements. What the CT had, the CT did have two, hand, two uh, handlebar handles, because I've fitted a manual engine on this bike, this operates the clutch. What it would, this bike would originally have come with a semi-automatic. What that would operate is the rear brake. You've got the rear brake here, which works. But you've also got this tricky little uh, bar here. So when you operate that, it pulls up. But you can also put a cable in here... And that will also operate it. So what I'll probably do is remove that from that bike, put it on that bike, and then removing my coffee, I'll just fit on a standard bar to the CT, because the CT's rear trick bar um, obviously isn't being used. Um, it's either that... Or I simply remove that lever, in which case you'd have all this bit, which would look a little bit odd, perhaps. I 
could grind all that off, but I don't really want to do that. So I'll I will fit that as a, an additional rear brake uh, lever. Um, so yeah, it's bank holiday weekend. It's now Friday. Um, and I've got a bit of time to work on this, so um, we'll see how we get on. Right, this is the side stand. It came on a standard, very cheap pit bike <coughs> foot pedal thing. So you've got this that goes underneath the engine, and it's got the side stand bracket there, which fit the side stand. The side stand was useless for this application. It was about that long. So I just chopped it, heat, heated and put this in the vise to bend it in and uh, basically give it the length, shorten it uh, so it fitted, which worked absolutely fine. Another problem was there was far too much metal in here. So when you put the side stand down, it sort of went like that. You know, not like that, which is where you want it to be. It was sort of like that. It was... I mean, it's just... It's a cheap part, but it's um, totally fucking useless out of the box. So uh, it wasn't such a big deal. I just had to grind down a load of metal there. And now that fits lengthwise and stowwise, and I'm very happy. So that is another job sniped off. Right, I had a bit of a lazy day of it yesterday. I was mucking around with various things, not necessarily this bike. I have put that... Um, I have swapped the uh, brake lever arm from the CT onto this and I'm going to swap it back again today because there's a bit of an issue with it um, so I'm just going to put it on the normal one which means I will have a surplus uh, lever on this so I'll take it off and basically cut out all this um, I'm going to start off the day today with a little bit of fabrication this is a, a fuel tap I'm going to put it in line here so I'm going to have to make a little bracket to go behind here to mount that onto. So I am, of course, going to have a brew first. Then I'm going to swap the brake arm back and then I'm going to start a bit of bracketeering. Righty-ho, that's the lever removed and I'm about to get chopping. Right, that's done now. Point to self. Uh, angle grinder doesn't really work on aluminium. So I did that with a hacksaw in the end. But that will do. Right, just fitted on a couple of little indicators at the front. Little LED jobs. Uh, I'm now going to start wiring up the, uh, the headlight unit and all the uh, handlebar switch gear and all the rest of it. It's a laborious uh, job, but here we go. Right, this is my speedometer, uh, which is part of the light unit. I've taken it apart. That's the speedometer part of it. It's a bit, a bit shit, really. It's not exactly Honda quality, but it's just an aftermarket part. I've taken the two lenses out, and I'm going to replace them with LEDs, and I'm going to put another one in the centre. Um, so I'll have indicator neutral and high beam LEDs and I'll put an LED just a normal white LED in the back somewhere just for nighttime illumination uh, reasonably simple little job that right there you go three LEDs in there and I've just got one of these little LED lights which is going to go into that for a sort of illumination. Right, this is one of the only marginally technical electronic bits of the whole uh, build. Basically, what you've got here is an indicator LED. Um, it's a single telltale and it'll flash when either indicator, left or right, is on. So obviously you want isolation between the left and the right um, otherwise, they'll all flash if you join the wires together. So, for that, you need two diodes. This I've actually taken off a piece of junk equipment at work. This is two diodes in one little unit. So, of these two tails here, you'll have each of the indicator 
left and right feeds going in and then off the uh, common terminal we'll go to that LED which will give them the uh, the isolation so I'm going to put all that back together and sort of wire it up a bit better and that's that little job done right that's back together now three lights at the front and I've done a common earth just to tidy it up at the back and that's that little um, double diode I've just stuck it onto the back so it's out of the way so that is nice and neat and ready to reinstall right uh, that is the fuel tap on I want to get in a little um, fuel filter that I'll fix underneath it the one I've got or the ones I've got um, are too small next job oh the postman's come I fitted a sort of tool roll and on the, uh, the CT I think they work quite well. Anyway, fitting the back light. The bracket here is wrong. It used to be straight across. I've cut it down. And now, this is the old light unit. Same as the CT, I'll show you. Same as the CT there. Uh, standard. Honda part, so I need to build a bracket, uh, a bit of fabrication now to uh, build a bracket to fit that type light, so I shall crack on with that. Well, I don't often get to use that drill bit. Here we go. Boom, like a champ. Right, a little bit rough that, but it'll work. So, there you go. That should just screw into there. Into those holes. And the other thing will screw onto it. But uh, before I do that, I'm going to sandblast that down and paint it black. And there we are, blasted, just ready to paint up now. You know I love this, don't you? You know I love it. Right, I'm going to try and salvage this. It's a bit uh, sort of faded, as you can see. But uh, I'm going to see if I can bring it back to life a bit with the old uh, Dremel. Well, that didn't really work. Righty ho, that's me bracket finished. Time to install it now. Right, that's me uh, nifty little bracket on there. And if you have a look behind that, you'll see that I've fitted the rear indicators now in the uh, slow process that is the electrics. Right, I'm just doing a bit of tidying. This um, front mudguard I chopped down from a much sort of bigger uh, original, which means these are razor sharp. So, I've got some of this edging stuff here. And I've just tidied it up a bit. Um, and de-sharpened it. So I'm going to finish that now on the back. And there you go, nice and neat and finished. God, I'm just so clever, aren't I? I'm just so clever. Right, uh, another little bit of fabrication work, which I'm going to do, because it means I can put off doing the electricals, and the electricals are dull. So uh, what I'm going to do, this here would originally have housed the air filter. There's a, there was a pin in the centre, which I've just removed. Um... I'm going to fabricate a sort of um, a panel, if you like, uh, for switches and accessories that I'm going to put there um, out of some sheet steel. So uh, I'm going to have a little go of that now. Right, there we go. A bit of uh, fabrication and welding. <laughs> I'm not much of a welder, but um, yeah, I quite enjoy the sort of uh, do-it-yourself approach to some of this stuff. So I don't mind uh, trying my hand at a bit of fabrication. I'm not sure what that's going to look like on the bike. It might just look too crazy and might not getting, uh, end up getting used, but uh, we shall see. Right, there we go. It's now 
Easter Bank Holiday Monday, and that's that little uh, panel or box that I made up yesterday. You get the you get the idea. Um, so not it's you know it's a bit rough and ready, but it's it's all right. So yeah, um, it's just really to hide that um, that sort of space there, but also. Um, uh, I'm going to put a little feature on this bike that I've sort of been meaning to do uh, as an addition to one of my projects for a while now. Um, I, um, I was a kid in the late 70s, early 80s, and you had some really nice cars, different cars on the roads back then. You had the old Brit stuff, the Triumphs, Morris, MGs, all that kind of stuff. And as a kid, I used to walk down the side of the road and look at the cars and look inside them, and I was a bit sort of um, obsessed with switch gear at the time so I, I used to look inside the cars and look at the switches um, and there was one switch in particular that was a firm favourite of mine and that one was on a lot of the old the old British cars it's this one here I managed to source this from a scrapyard years ago when I was mucking around now, this is the old hazard warning light switch that you get on Range Rovers and most British cars I mean, this is obviously before the days of diodes, or before they were used. This is this is a ten-pole switch. It's hugely overcomplicated and mechanical. It's got a light in there. This pulls out, pushes in, etc. So anyway, I'm going to have this as a functioning uh, hazard warning light. Uh, switch, which I think will be quite funky, and also one of these things here is just a uh, DIN uh, power accessory socket, spring loaded top. So, those two little beauties are going to go into there and they're going to be mounted on the bike. Look at that! How crazy is that? I've got an old Lucas uh, hazard warning light and that's I'm pretty pleased with that, that's pretty cool. I've earned myself a brew. Right e ho, there we go. That is pretty much finished now. I've done the wiring and that's all good. Um, I can't, I've basically run out of steam now. I've got loads of stuff on order, but because of all this um, viral stuff going on, um, they'll arrive when they arrive. Um, and I'll fit them and I'll get it all up and running. I haven't tried to start the engine yet. It is, of course, a brand new engine. Um, I'll do that later. So there will be one further video, which will be the, the grand reveal and possible test ride, if you like. But there we go. Um, that is pretty much complete. Uh, <laughs> complete with crazy switch gear, etc. But um, that's a little bit of a, a sort of signature of mine. It's not the first time I've done done uh, crazy switch gear on motorbikes. If I show you my Beamer now, I fitted uh, amber flashes on it just because I can, and it's the sort of thing I do when I'm bored. Um, but yeah, very pleased with it. I think orange one there is uh, slightly in danger of becoming unloved. But uh, I know it will never really be unloved. But yeah, it's another one to add to the collection and I will do a follow-up video whenever it happens to be, next week, next couple of weeks or whatever, of the grand reveal. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed that so far and uh, I shall see you all later. Goodbye.